Hello again everyone, Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be dissertating and talking about my natal chart number two contest winner, and that is um, the Richmond One's, um, not going to be the Richmond One's chart, but his or her son's chart. And because this person requested that I did their, their son's chart, uh, so that's the one that I'm going to do. And anyway, let me get started. I'm going to give uh, part one of the overview of the chart. And firstly, the sun and the ascendant are both in Aries. And obviously this gives a double emphasis on Aries, uh, the person, very assertive, aggressive, outspoken. Um, these qualities are very, uh, very emphasized. And the one uh, thing about this one, the sun and the ascendant are in the same side sign I should say there's really the, the facade and the inner self are amalgamated and blended in so there's really that facade is not really so much there it's more that the person obviously very very real what you see is what you get there's no projection of self or trying to um, suppress the you know any inner inner character this person very is pretty much what you see is what you get and as I stated before the the Aries qualities are very strongly um, accentuated um, of course now the moon is in Libra and um, emotional needs may be associated with beauty uh, things of uh, refinement um, artistic endeavors um, this person may desire uh, have a strong emotional need to have peace and tranquility uh, in the person's life and may be good at like actually um, acting as like a mediator or somebody that um, is kind of like a peacemaker as far as arguments go. Now the thing is, um, his moon in Libra um, in conjuncts um, his sun, and being in very very different signs, it could be kind of a, a conflict in a way because on the the sun sign being in Aries is more combative. A little and then you have Libra being the peacemaker so you might um, it could create some inner turmoil to some degree because of the, the disparity in the characteristics of um, of the of these two signs so anyway the next thing is the majority of the planets are in the top half of the chart and he is more likely to be inclined to be extroverted as opposed to introverted more gregarious um, outgoing as opposed to shyness, uh, more about doing things with others and in public as opposed to doing things in solitude or by himself, um, more inclined to be objective as opposed to subjective. Now the next thing, uh, most of the planets are on the left side of the chart and the tendency would be to be more independent and self-reliant as opposed to dependent, uh, more um, more about being self-sufficient as opposed to asking others um, for help with things. His um, destiny is more about his actions and not so much predicated on others' moves. Now his final signature is in Aries and this reinforces the uh, Aries characteristics with the strong leadership abilities, um, the aggression, aggressive um, tendencies, very pioneering but um, sometimes can be impulsive, perhaps impetuous sometimes, maybe combative, but very, um, very competitive, and um, very, um, basically, um, people with um, strong Aries in their chart can have the no fear concept and things, and he probably has very, um, very little uh, physical fear. Now, um, he has a preponderance of planets, uh, influences in cardinal signs and when I say influences I'm talking about the ascended and midheaven included with the planets in his chart. Now it shows that he can be very eager and anxious to embark on projects, may start many projects simultaneously however may not follow up on all of them, uh, can have a lot of initiative and enterprise, um, likes to have much activity um, 
very um, hard for a uh, person with a lot of planets and cardinal signs, the majority of planets, influences and cardinal signs to be stagnant for any period, great period of time. Now, the majority of his planets' influences are in fire signs, and this generally indicates um, he's probably not short on exuberance and enthusiasm, uh, can have much optimism and be very expansive, energetic with a lot of uh, vitality and energy. Uh, there is apt to be very, um, have a very strong belief in his abilities. Uh, the next thing he has is Uranus and Aquarius in the 11th house. So this is, um, really um, can make him uh, very um, innovative, can be a ge ingenious, original uh, talent, um, perhaps for computers, affinity for electronics, uh, may have unusual eclectic interests, uh, may like esoteric groups and subjects, uh, because this is the, this is the um, Uranus in the 11th house, in it, it's in its accidental, I guess you could say its rulership, and Uranus in Aquarius is in its rulership by sign, so this is obviously a very good place for this planet um, to be in, and he can really accentuate the, um, I guess you could say, the, um, the inventive qualities perhaps that are connected with this um, planet and sign. Now his chart ruler is in his first house. Now this can indicate that his own needs are very paramount in his life scheme. Um, he ha could have a very strong emphasis on his appearance, his physical body, um, things that satisfy him strongly. Um, he could be very concerned with his first impression on, on others, more so than the average person. And his uh, personality can very well um, shine um, strongly in, um, in things connected with the first house. Now, he has um, Mercury in Pisces. And now, the one thing is, and I don't want to sound like disparaging or negative, but just being honest and objective, Mercury in Pisces is not really, it's not a good position for Mercury to be in, because thinking at times can be sometimes chaotic and disorganized. He could be very ambivalent in his thoughts. However, this could be, on the positive side, can be an intuitive and insightful position for Mercury. Um, he could be, um, his mind may be motivated toward um, strong uh, philanthropic um, interests in helping those that are less uh, fortunate uh, than himself. So, um, anyway, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for the uh, Richmond One's uh, Sun's Natal Chart, Part 1. And stay tuned next time where I'll be dissertating and talking about the Richmond One Sun Natal Chart, Part 2. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel, but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis on a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone. Because a person, astrologically, is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people stay well.